All right. Hello, everybody. This is Jim here. Do you still remember this Otis touch button that I created like um, two Christmas seasons ago? Well, as you see here, this paper, listen to the tape, listen. Well, as you can see, this paper isn't holding up well, so I decided it's time to change the ideas and also to replace this solid piece uh, like what you see, um, the stainless steel board inside of the elevator panel. So we're going to be changing from this paper using a cardboard piece. I'm going to be doing the exact same thing like I did with uh, paper. So it's just pretty much almost the same thing. You just trace around those circles and then you just uh, cut a piece of hole into it. So it's just similar like what I did with the computer paper. But this time we are going to be using a cardboard to replace this. So it is much more sturdier than this uh, computer paper. So the first thing we're going to do is just use an empty box and uh, cut out one of the faces. All right, so as you can see here, I just ripped that open. So what we're going to do is cut that one open as well. So I'm going to use my foot while I cut this part off. All right, I think it's working now. Yep, it is. See, this part is now opened up. So it just got all the way. All right, now that I got both sides of this cardboard box pulled off, now the next thing I'm gonna do is cut this part and this part right here. All right, so I just got this plaque peeled off from all that cutting. You see, it's got a big mess up there. I'm gonna have to go through it later. And I think this is gonna fit pretty well onto my Otis Touch Sensitive Elevator COP. All right, so, I'm not sure if you could barely see that, but what I just did is I just traced over uh, the circles, and luckily I have this extra uh, number one Otis touch button, so I can just place it around the right aisle and just finish it off. Alright, so as you can see here, what I just did is I just cut all the parts to it. See, it's almost done. Uh, what I did is I actually used this knife. And I just poked it here, 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 here. And I just cut all the circles with these holes so that way it can fit into that right there. And, and yeah, my hands are dirty because I've been using this pencil. So I'm sorry about that. I'm probably probably going to like uh, clean this up when I'm done because there may be some dust and all that. So with all that, with all that being said, I'm not going to show you the part. I'm not going to show you in full details, but... I'll just show you quickly for a bit. So what you do is just poke it in like that. And and all and what you just do is just is poke, 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 just like that. So with all that being said, I will come back to you when it's fully, fully finished. All right. Now that I got everything all poked out, all the 10 holes. So that way this will fit on very well when I finish the results. So what I'm going to do is take off all this stuff and I'm going to stick them on to this new board all right so the project is now complete well not fully complete because um i haven't put the tapes or glue on i may either add a uh, either glue or tape just like i did with my previous one where i added the tapes behind it so anyways as you can see here i just uh, took off the button pieces from the computer paper i used to in the past and uh, and I placed it onto this new piece of cardboard which is very very sturdier unlike the computer paper which is all bended very easily now as you see right there you see that is where I originally had that you see look at all that see this is where I originally did the first project yeah when I ripped them out that this whole paper like uh, literally ripped apart so it was kind of bit of a pain to rip it apart but I eventually got it out so while it looks finished but not completely because like i said i have not even added the tapes in order to hold the button behind it see watch what happens when i pick it up and flip it vertically see they all fall out see look at that they all fall out so see that's the reason why it's not holding up well you see now i'm going to show you how to plug this button 
onto this board like what you see on a real elevator control operating panel. Yeah, you can see this one button partially broke because while I was doing this, it like this thing like dropped to the ground. But nonetheless, it's still good because um still got that same button, so it's not really a big deal. So what you need to do is have this flat on the table like this. And what you do is just take one of your pieces right here. You see, like I tell you, it's not holding up well. What you just do is just slide it underneath the cardboard piece and then just press it down as hard as you can. Press on every single one of them until, until it wedges in place. Same goes with this 10 button right here. See, what you do is just slide it underneath and you just keep pushing until it reaches the hole. Squeeze it down and it should stay in place just like that. See? This for now is the completed version, which it looks completed right now. See? This is how it looks. So what matters the most is show you what the completed project will look like. So once I add the tapes, they're basically just going to be on the back side. You just flip it over, but everything else on the front side will look exactly the same. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this uh, elevator reconstruction project on my Otis Touch buttons. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and that is going to be it.